give grace for critical thinking. Lord, show us how not to just take whatever is thrown at us, but to think through the lens of the Lord Jesus Christ, to measure it and discern it according to the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, our minds are to be used for your glory. Our minds are to be used for your honor. Lord, and we know that even our peace begins in our minds. And so now, Father, your word reminds us that you will keep them in perfect peace who set their minds on you. And so today, order our thoughts that we may walk, live, and engage others at peace. Thank you for guiding our minds to a place of healthy worship. In Jesus' name, we ask this. And the people of God said together, amen. Hear what Proverbs chapter 2, verse 20 says. It says, follow the way of good people and keep to the paths of the righteous. Heavenly Father, it is your desire that I connect myself to individuals that guide me to a place of healthy and life-giving relationship with you. Father, we pray now that you'll provide spiritual insight concerning the people that are around us. Grant us the grace to filter our fellowships so that we're connected to those that have a heart to worship and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Remove any ungodly blinders from our eyes that prevent us from seeing the true hearts and motives of the people that are around us. Show us who is a spiritual asset for our journey of faith and who's a spiritual liability for our journey of faith. Then give us the boldness to make the necessary decisions to reorder our friendships and reorder our acquaintances so that we're not guided and influenced by people that are not guided and influenced by you. And so, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would show us exactly who you've deposited into our lives. Lord, we pray for even social media affiliations. Let us not accidentally glance in the direction of anything or anyone that would guide us away from the Lordship of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you that you love us so much that you deposit people into our social spaces that will keep us accountable and responsible in our walk in Christ. And now, Lord Jesus, we desire to have a heart that reflects you. So, Lord, surround us with people that have a heart that reflect you. Surround us with people that are studied in the Word of God. Surround us by people that are saturated in the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, Father, we thank you in advance that because of who will be around us, our worship will go higher, our praise will go higher, our devotion to you will go higher, our holiness will go higher, our honoring of you will go higher, our steps will be straighter, our language will be purer. We thank you, Lord, that we will look more like you because you send us people that reflect you. It is in Jesus' name that we ask it all, believe and get done. And the people of God say it together, amen. Our children are an inheritance from the Lord, the next generation of the faith and the hope of our community. But they live in a world where they're bombarded on every side with daily attacks from the enemy that seek to influence and infect them at every level of their being. Father, we ask that you would guard their hearts and minds against any advancements of the enemy that may try to come through their video games, through media, or any other digital or cyber encounters. We pray against and bind the spirits of suicide, guilt, depression, abandonment, fear, disobedience, idolatry, fornication, godlessness, confusion, slothfulness, apathy, and rebellion. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we cast you forth from their hearts, their minds, and their spirits. Book of Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 and 24 says, whatever you do. Do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the source of every good thing that happens in my life. Every blessing has your fingerprint on it, and every life-giving encounter has been scripted by you. As I have been blessed with any given assignment in this world, Grant me the grace to perform it with the heart of worship. Whether it's my job, whether it's a special project, whether it's a workshop or a ministry opportunity, remind me that it's to be carried out with excellence and your goodness. You are my eternal supervisor, and I desire that you consider my work to be well done. Give me the strength 
provide me with the vision. Grant me the confidence to be well-pleasing in my performance and my completion of the task that you've given. Bless my hands that my work may be established in a way that's excellent before your face. Allow everything that's done by me to bring light into a dark world and salt into a dismal community that your name may get the glory, the honor, and the praise from everything that's done in Jesus' name. I ask this, and the people of God said, Amen.
I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's give God a hand of praise this Sunday morning. First Sunday in, first Sunday in March. Uh, please, I ask that you stand, uh, prepare for our call to worship. First Corinthians 11, chapter verses 23 through 29. God is so good, isn't he? There he is. Amen. Just one moment. Bring, bring them on in. Come on. Okay. Okay, First Corinthians, eleventh chapter. Starting verse 23, let us begin. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. You may be seated. We now have a musical selection from our leader, Brother Benjamin Bryant. Amazing grace, how sweet. 
sweet the sound Saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found I was blind But now I Come on, try Jesus Oh, he's all right Try Jesus Try Jesus I done tried him in last time. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, or oh, whether shall I go? Come on, church. Try Jesus. Oh, he's right. Try Jesus. Oh, he's right. Try Jesus. Shall glory. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God another hand of praise as we, this morning. We will now be blessed with our morning meditation from Sister Mother Rudell Berry. Amen. Let's give God a hand as she comes. Close your eyes. Yesterday has passed, gone. Things we worried about did not happen. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day the Lord ha has made. Be glad. Rejoice in today. Today is the page God divinely ordered in the book of your life's journey. Our loving Father has gifted us with blessings beyond whatever we could ask or imagine. Stop. Pray. God is in control. Let go. Let God trust God. Fall backward. Release yourself to God, singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I am weak, yet safely, securely, I rest in my Jesus' strong arms. Yes, Jesus loves me. Amen. I'll be blessed with the hymn. Let's ask that you'll stand, sing together, please.
continue to pray that your spirit will teach us and transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, for a moment there, I thought uh, the late deacon James Porter <laughs> had risen again. I, that was Ben, all right. But he did pretty good, pretty good Deacon Porter imitation there. Right? All right, so we are so grateful. Amen, so grateful, so grateful. Want to talk about reliable words, reliable words. We live in a time when so many words we hear, especially from our leaders, on the national stage are just not reliable. Right. It will complicate it in a pandemic and complications come because one person say this, someone say that, someone else say something else and we find that words are not reliable. Second Chronicles chapter 32, two verses. Be strong and courageous. Yes, that's a good uh, point for us. Wherever you are, whatever you're facing, hmm? be strong and courageous. Be not afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him, for there is another, there's a capital A. That, that means he's pointing to God. He says, there is another with us greater than all those with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and fight our battles, to help us and fight our battles. And the people relied, the people relied on the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. They relied on Hezekiah's words because his words were reliable. Hezekiah, known for being one of the good kings of Judah. He's often referred to as good king Hezekiah. Let you know there were some bad kings. So, so there are good leaders and there are bad leaders. In context, the king of Assyria has invaded Judah. So the nation is in peril. The nation is in trouble. The king of Assyria has a vast army. Hezekiah re refers to them as a horde. That means it's just a, uh, you know, if, if we were over in Kenya, we would say buku. That's just a buku number of them. And the people are afraid, they are concerned. The nation is threatened. And so in the midst of the threat, the leader of the nation, King Hezekiah, he speaks these words, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid, don't be dismayed. The king of Assyria has a great army with him, but we have another with us right. who's greater than all that he has with him. With him is an arm of flesh. He just has a big number. Yeah, now don't get excited about the big number. He says, but with us is the Lord our God. 
With, with us is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of heaven's armies, and, uh, to help us and to fight our battles. Listen, there, there are battles you shouldn't be fighting. Well, but what you fighting is this battle belongs to God. And the people relied upon the words of Hezekiah because his words were reliable. Uh, in our day, words are not reliable. Leaders manipulate truth. We get lies, misinformation, disinformation, propaganda, and there are even entire news network that devote themselves to opinions that's passed off as truth. And so I identify with the people here in Hezekiah's day. They're like, what is going on? And, and we've got this problem. We have this, this enemy, we, we have the king of Assyria, he's invaded. And Hezekiah says, don't worry about it. This is not our problem. I'm wondering this morning, how many times we are struggling with problems, even struggling with people? And it shouldn't be our struggle. Hezekiah says that the Lord our God is with us to help us and to fight our battles. Those are reliable words. How do we know they're reliable? Because they're true. Reliable words are true. Acts 26, 24 Paul, the apostle, is defending himself before governor Festus, the Roman governor. And Paul has appealed to Caesar because the Jews seek to kill him for his testimony. He's telling them about Jesus and what Jesus had done in his life, that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, and they were angry. And so Paul was, was, was communicating this truth to Festus. And Festus uh, suddenly shouted out at Paul, and he said, Paul, you are insane. Too much study has made you crazy. Well, you know, some of us will never be accused of that. <laughs> but Paul replied, I'm not insane, most excellent Festus. I am saying the sober truth. Sober truth. He, he's saying, I'm speaking the absolute truth. And truth really is an absolute. Don't listen to the propaganda of our day. It, it has a, a fancy name. It's called uh, moral relativism. And they say, your truth is not my truth, and my truth is not your truth, but we can all have our own truths. And so they say truth is just relative. It's, in other words, uh, you can believe whatever you want to believe, and, and I can believe whatever I want to believe because there is no absolute. There, 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 there are no absolutes. But yes, there is an absolute. That's why the universe is held in order. Do you know why the sun is going to come up tomorrow morning? Because God said, long time ago. And the sun has been coming up ever since God spoke it into being. And guess what? It will continue. Why? Because there is an absolute, and it's important to understand that because we must build our lives and make life decisions based upon truth that is absolute, not relative. 
Well, you know, it works. If it works, as I am, but if it don't work, yes, you know, if you. No, 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 no. Paul said, what I'm saying is the sober truth. And truth is an absolute. So reliable words are true, but not only are reliable words true, reliable words are also tested. Paul speaking to the Christians in Thessalonica, he says, we never stop thanking God that when you receive his message from us, you didn't think of our words as mere human ideas. You accepted what we said as the very word of God, which, of course, it is. And this word continues to work in you who believe. Listen, Paul says, this word has been tested. Why? Because Paul taught it, they believe it, it was tested, and every time God's word is tested, God wins. Every time God's word is tested in your life, listen, you win. James said, uh, consider it joy when you fall into many and various tests and trials because the testing of your faith produces endurance. God's word, when it's tested, it works in us and makes us look like God. It, it, it conforms us into the image of his dear son. God's word is, 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 is powerful. Every time it's tested, it's found to be true. So reliable words are true. Reliable, reliable words are tested, but then also reliable words, I like this, are triumphant. They're triumphant. They bring, they bring victory. Look at what happened in Hezekiah's situation. In our text today, the king of Assyria has invaded Judah, and, and he's he, he, in that day, the king would send emissaries to the, the main city or the capital city that, that he's invaded the nation. He goes to the capital, and these emissaries would shout over the walls of the city and talk about how the king has defeated everybody, and, and, and uh, nobody's able to beat him, and, and you guys are, are going to starve to death behind those walls. You might as well give up. It just, and, and so, you know, in our day, we would call it trash talking. And so these emissaries had come to Jerusalem, and they were outside talking trash. And so here are all the people behind the wall. They're listening to all of this. And so Hezekiah, when he hears them talk about how God isn't able to deliver them, he hears... Uh, the king of Assyria's emissaries mocking God, making fun of God. And you know what Hezekiah did? He got out on his knees and he prayed. L -l -l listen, listen at what happened here at verse 20. For this cause, the cause I just described, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. Yes. So, you know, there are times we're fighting battles when we should be on our knees. There are times we're struggling with people and struggling with things and struggling with situations when we should be on our knees and, and talking to God and telling God about it. I just love this because Hezekiah, he, 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 he said, now Lord, I, I know you heard what they said. I know you heard what they said about you. They, they, they have mocked you, the creator of the universe. And so Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, they prayed, they cried out to heaven, and God responded. Do you know what God did? He sent one angel. <laughs> oh, I wish I had somebody. Very next verse, the 
and the Lord sent an angel, not some angels. God sent an, uh, an is one. He, he, he sent an angel. What, what did an angel? Who cut off all the mighty warriors. Now remember, the king of Assyria had a horde. That's like saying a gazillion. He had, uh, it, so don't get caught up in the numbers. Do I have a church? Don't get caught up in the group, in the numbers. Uh, for the Lord sent one angel who cut off all the mighty warriors and commanders and officers in the camp of the king of Assyria. And so the king of Assyria returned, shamefaced it to his own land. He went into the house of his idol god and some of his own children killed him. And that's just embarrassing. But the text says, listen at this, when you trust God and you understand that his words are true, his words are tested, his words are triumphant, God can shame the enemy's camp. When you place your trust in God and believe and trust in him, God, listen, God can send one angel. Now you, 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 you've got to do the math. Two angels leveled Sodom and Gomorrah. So here Hezekiah is facing this gazillion Assyrian troops, and God sends one angel. And that was too many. Just send one. And he annihilates the Assyrian army. Do you know that scripture teaches that children have angels? We call them guardian angels. Do I have a church? Yes. Now, I don't want you to go around looking for no guardian angels and praying to no angels and all that. I want you to keep praying to Jesus. Yes. Keep praying to God in Jesus' name. But I, but I want you to understand that God has myriads of angels at his disposal who are in heaven around his throne waiting to do God's bidding and when 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 God's people cry God listens and look at what one angel <laughs> this is truth yes and so I say to you today as we face an uncertain future in our nation and our world, and uh, I, I just uh, gassed up Sister Jacob's vehicle, yeah. and uh, that's that's a that's what husbands do. Uh, amen. Well, that's what some husbands do. <laughs> gassed up Sister Jacob. Vehicle. She don't know when she last put some gas in something. <laughs> uh, but it was this morning, early this morning, three dollars and ninety-nine and nine tenths. <laughs> that's for uh, that's just just put four dollars. Three ninety nine and nine tenths. You can't spend a tenth of a cent. You yes. So so much is uncertain uh, as we live in this time. But what is certain is this word. What is certain is our God, our Savior. And so I encourage you to saturate yourself with God's word. Anchor yourself.
because whatever storms are coming to our nation and our world, I promise you, if you are anchored in truth, if you are anchored in this absolute truth that God has given us in his word, you will weather every storm. You will win every battle. You will be sustained by this truth. The reason I know it's true is because of what Jesus said in John, Gospel of John 17, 17, as I close. The 17th chapter of John is Jesus' high priestly prayer. That's what it's called. It's the prayer he prayed before going on to the cross, but he prayed for his disciples. And he was not praying only for those immediate disciples, but he said, but for all those also who will believe. So that's us. Oh, this should be so encouraging. It's us. He prayed for us before he went to the cross. And listen at what he says here at the 17th verse. He says, Father, make them, that's us, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. He says, sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. Jesus says, Teach them the truth because the truth will set them apart from everything and everybody else. And the truth, listen, the truth will sustain you. Maybe you're here today and having heard the gospel preach, you made a decision. You come to a decision to give Jesus uh, your life. Uh, and we have counselors here to help you make that decision. Or maybe you hear. You already know Christ as Savior, uh, but you are not connected to a local church, and you believe that New Covenant is the place that God has for you. And if that's you as we stand, will you come forward? One of my counselors will meet you and take you to a place where you can make that decision. If that's you today, we invite you to come. What God can do. What is done for others, he'll do for you. When arms wide open, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. Well, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen, 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 amen. All right. If you're here today and this is your first time with us, and uh, you don't mind giving us a wave so we'll know that you're a first timer, we'll do our best to make you feel welcome even uh, while we're social distancing, all right? Well, we had a couple of the new folk at 8 o'clock that early in the morning. Isn't that something? <laughs> yes, 8 o'clock is, is rocking. Amen. So we're thankful uh, for all of you. Hopefully you've already made use of the uh, offertory boxes for your giving. And if not, please do so immediately uh, after the benediction today. We will... Uh, now have our offertory prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God, that you watch over us and keep us, and that you have blessed us uh, with what we have. All that we have belongs to you, and we have come to return a portion uh, to you, acknowledging that you own it all. And so we ask that you will bless these gifts that have been given in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We have a couple of cards to acknowledge. Uh, this one comes from Sister Elaine Moore, who uh, wishes to thank the New Covenant congregation for the phone calls and cards and everything that has been done for her in the passing of her brother. And uh, she was up there in New York. Thank God she's back safely. Also, we have a card from Sister Linda Smith, 
uh, in, in appreciation to her new covenant family for cards, prayers, phone calls, and uh, uh, all thoughts of kindness and the uh, loss of her sister, Mary Smith Thomas. And uh, she says, may God continue to bless each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. We are uh, concerned in prayer for continued prayer for Maddie Shelton, Dolores Johnson, Carl Washington, Ann Pinkston. Uh, Brandon Davis was admitted to Shands uh, yesterday. We're praying that uh, the Lord would bring him out of there soon, quickly. Amen. And uh, for uh, every bereaved family, and there are so many, uh, we're praying also for the people of the Ukraine. Uh, now, uh, it's, it's easy to change to another channel or just go on and uh, but those people are suffering, really, because a tyrant, uh, a, a king of Assyria, has invaded yet another nation. You know, and so, uh, well, we're thankful that God. Listen, God put an ocean between us and a lot of things, and that in itself is a blessing. But don't depend on the ocean to keep the kings of Assyria away. Uh, so we need to pray for the folk who are going through like the uh, uh, people of Ukraine are because it's their day today. We don't know what could happen even here because uh, there are a lot of, of uh, terrorists that are local. I wish I had somebody. At any rate, uh, prayer is always in order. Uh, we have a member looking for a house or a par apartment to rent or even it's for sale. And so they uh, asked me to just make that known. And if you are a real estate person and, and you have that, call the church office and you can get their information. They just want it, I guess, to uh, shop in house first. Amen. All right. So thank God. And uh, amen. We're going to uh, ask Reverend Carter if he will come. Let's give God another hand. Praise. <laughs> We're going to start our communion service now. We have an open communion. All baptized believers are welcome to partake with us together. And we have such a great God to serve. Amen. Uh, we remember Jesus is dying on the cross and being rose that very day. Let us, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, and for the debt and the price he paid on the cross at Calvary for our sins. And he said, as often as we do this, do it, do it in remembrance of him. So as we take this meal, we remember you, dear Father. And Father, you alone make us righteous. And we'll ask it all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you have your cups open, then the, the bread represents the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, let us all eat together. And the cup represents the blood of Christ as we all drink together. Amen. Uh, without a benediction, we're going to ask that you uh, look to each other and uh, just gre greet each other as we uh, depart from this place today. And we thank God for Pastor Jacobs and uh, the New Covenant men men members. God bless you and thank you. I knew I was forgetting something, but we can still do it as we're leaving. All these March birthdays. We, I forgot. We can't let you all go without being loved. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, March babies. Happy birthday to you. We love you. We do. We love you, we do. 
We love you, March babies. We love you, we do. May the good Lord bless you. 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 All right, let's listen to Mother Barry. She's a March young baby. Ninety what? Ninety. Ninety. All right. Twenty-first. Ninety. Amen. Ninety and counting. All right. All right. What a blessing. 